Hey, what's up everybody? Retro Gaming Guy here. So today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review a retro game stick that I picked up off of Amazon. But things take a very different turn here. This ends up not being a good product in the end, to the point where I was just going to scrap the entire video, in all honesty, not even bother with my time, you know, continuing on with it because it was such a disaster. But then I thought about it and I wanted to make the video anyways to show you guys what is flooding the um, plug and play market these days. There's more and more products becoming readily available on sites like AliExpress or um, Amazon or even eBay. I've seen stuff popping up on lately. And I think that we need to be aware of what's out there because there's so many products coming out that look like previous versions of products that just aren't up to par with what we're looking for and what we're expecting in a plug and play setup. So I'm gonna show you guys you know, the unboxing portion of this, we're gonna walk through and tour everything, and then we're also gonna demo it. And at the end, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about what the experience was like. And there's no cliffhangers here. I'm not gonna tell you that it was a good experience because it's not a good experience, but I am gonna to talk to you guys about what you should be on the lookout for in the future when picking up plug and play consoles and where this exactly went wrong for me. So let's dive into it and see what we've got. All right, guys, so here we are booted up into our retro game stick. And the way that we land on here is in our master game list. You can see up in the top left corner, it says list right there. This is going to be a list that includes every single game that is included on here. It's all going to be laid out here. And the first thing I notice is that we do have a game count on the left hand side, followed by the title of each of our games. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat here is the fact that this is not in alphabetical order. And I believe this is probably the only time I've ever seen a game list for any sort of setup like this that's not in alphabetical order because you need it in alphabetical order in order to locate titles. So if I wanted to go through here and I wanted to say, hey, I'm looking for Mario Kart, for example, it doesn't even matter what Mario Kart game I'm looking for. We know that Mario Kart is going to be an M titled game and it's going to be pretty high up in the list because it starts with M, next letter is A, so it would be up pretty high on the M titles. We can't go in here and really look for that because everything's just all over the place. We have titles that start with, we started with, um, what was it, King of Fighters, so it started with K. It's actually The King of Fighters, but I can understand skipping The and going right to King and, you know, becoming a K title, but we go from K right into what's the next letter on here s there's no l there's no you know any of those other letters between k and s it just totally jumps right over to the s titles and then we have p thrown in here a t then back to s it's just totally random here so it's really hard to actually locate titles now we do have a game count going on on the left hand side so i'm going to actually scroll upwards and I want to see what the total number is on here. So right there, 25,004 titles included on here. And it ends with NBA 3-on-3 three three featuring Kobe Bryant. This is a title that should be nowhere near the bottom of our list. If it was in alphabetical order, we should be ending with Z titles, not N titles. So unfortunately, the way that this is laid out, it's just impossible to actually go through here and locate the titles that you want to find. So next category I see is type. So if we hit R1 on our controller brings us over to type. And this is where all of our games are broken down by collection or emulator. So first one is gonna be CPS, which is gonna be Capcom system. It's arcade games that were made by Capcom. So we'll jump in here. And this kicks off with the King of Fighters 97. And it looks to me like that master list is pulling off of these individual collections and just kind of putting them in one by one, but in order. And that's probably where we're getting that list because the first game over there on the main list was King of Fighters uh, 97, and that's what we have here. So again, it's the exact same layout, not in alphabetical order, very hard to locate things. But you can see the layout in here. We have the text list and game count on the left-hand side. Right-hand side, we're gonna get a screenshot from each title, and it looks to be accurate. We're gonna be checking up on that though um, throughout. And another thing I'm noticing on here is, let's take a look at this one. This is Marvel Superheroes. The title here in the text is Super Comics Hero. So if you were to look for a specific title, let's say that somehow you were able to get to the right place, obviously not through alphabetical order, but you were able to find the title. How would you know that Super Comics Hero means Marvel Superheroes by Capcom? It just doesn't line up with the actual title. So very hard to actually locate what you'd be looking for in here. 
at least the box art or the screenshots rather seem to line up with the proper titles. Um, we do have some that look to be, I'm not sure if this is, this is probably the sequel. Not that you can tell that from the text list on the left hand side though. So just really unorganized, unfortunately, and really not user friendly at all. All right, so I'm going to back out of Capcom system. Next one is FB Hacks. Um, nothing in here. Next one is FC. This is Family Computer. And you can see the game count here. Seems to be a direct continuation. Let's just jump over here, though. This one ends at 1155 for our count. So if we go back over here to FC, 1156. So that's exactly what they did with that game list, the master game list. They just pieced together everything you know, collection by collection, and just put them in one massive list. So here you can see, again, not alphabetical order by any means. I'm not even sure if all of these screenshots line up correctly. I'm going to be looking. Yeah, I mean, these seem to be okay. Ghostbusters is Ghostbusters. A few of them seemed a little bit off, but it could have just been like random screenshots from the game that you know, just weren't ringing bells with me, but okay, like this one, Lunar Pool is the picture and it's pa paired with uh, Billiard. So, you know, not all of them seem to be lined up correctly. This one is Plants vs. Zombies. Picture lines up perfectly with that. This one does not. So it's very all over the place. All right, we're going to back out of this collection. Let's continue on. We've got Game Boy Advance over here. And we don't know how many titles are in each collection either. We could probably piece it together. Like if we went from here and we said, all right, there's, we start at 6971 and we end at 8579. So what is the, what's the math on that? I'll do it for you real quick. I'm not going to do this for every collection though, because I shouldn't have to be doing, you know, a math breakdown here to figure out, you know, how many games we have for each collection, but we do 8,579 and we would minus that by, um, 69.71, and that should give us our total for this. That means that there's 16, um, 1,608 games in this collection, which seems very high for Game Boy Advance. Typically, we would be quite a bit lower than that, so we might have some duplicates. We may also have um, Japanese titles in here as well, and that would account for, you know, having that higher number of total titles in here. But yeah, I mean, it's just really tough to locate titles that you want in here, and they just don't seem like some of the, the Japanese titles I'm not super familiar with anyways, but like here, Sonic Advance, which is actually a great game for Game Boy Advance, it's just labeled as Sonic 1, so it just makes it really hard to find stuff any way you try to find anything. So uh, we'll back out of this one. We'll continue on. MAME, one of my favorite collections. I love classic arcades. We start at 8580. And we go to 8701. So not a ton of games in here. And let's go through here. And I'm going to just try to find, a ton, you know, some maybe some of my favorite titles in here. And it's a challenge because, again, it's actually just writing down, I think, the uh, ROM titles, not the actual game titles. So if you look up MAME ROMs, they're usually abbreviated. And it looks like they didn't go in and, you know, try to actually change those around and make them readable or, um, you know, really well polished. They just simply put them in exactly as they came in, didn't put much time into this. So this one says Captain Hook, and this title would be actually Hook, judging by the screenshot there, which is actually one of my favorite titles for Classic Arcade. I love that game. It's a great game. But I wouldn't be typing Captain Hook to search for it. Maybe it would still come up because Hook is in the cat is in the title rather. But here we have Moonwalker, great title, Michael Jackson video game. There, um, let's continue on though. I'm definitely seeing some titles that again just don't seem to line up perfectly with the screenshot. So this one is Hook as well. Hook would be the proper title for the game we just looked at, but look at the graphic here. This screenshot clearly isn't Hook. Let's actually launch into this and see if it gives us the right game at least. It doesn't. It doesn't even give us a game from the same decade. It gives us Galaxy Rescue. So we'll back out of this. 
and we can back out by hitting start and select. It brings up this little menu and we'll just hit exit game with our A button or X if you were using a, true, a truly labeled PlayStation style controller. Let's just go up here and we had Captain Hook at the top. I want to see if that launches the correct game at least, which would be Hook. Not Captain Hook, Hook, but that's a title I love playing. I just want to see if it's actually on here and it actually loads in properly because the last one clearly didn't. So we'll launch this one and let's see. Looks like this is going to work because that I know that's how Hook actually launches. Yeah, that's the right game. All right, so interesting, just the way that they've put everything together and kind of mislabeled titles as well. So let's back out of this collection. We'll go over to Game Boy Color. Super King Kong 1, that looks like um, Donkey Kong Country to me. So they're changing title names, which also makes it a challenge to locate things. Like, look at this, Ranch Boy 3 is Harvest Moon 3. Very weird. Rockman 2 is Mega Man Extreme 2. You see what I mean? It's just not lining up properly with what it should here. Um, and I, here we have X-Men. That seems to be okay. Same thing over here. Doesn't give you the full title name, but it's close at least. Toy Story 2 is good. So some of them are great. Some of them are just totally off. Um, let's continue on. We have old school Game Boy here. Not much to see there. Rockman again instead of Mega Man. That seems to be their, their theme. Galaxy Warrior is Metroid? Yeah, Galaxy Warrior 2 is Metroid 2. Yeah, so they're just taking some really big liberties here. Star of um, Kabi is Kirby's Dream Land 2. Scary. Yeah, I mean, just all over the place here. Um, here we have Sega Mega Drive. Let's jump through here a little bit. I'm getting the same vibe throughout, like Flying Bat 2. Clearly not the same title as what is pictured there. Just makes it, unfortunately, an absolute mess to navigate on here. Deadly Killer 2 is Lethal Enforcers 2, Gunfighters. Um, yeah, just pretty wild. NBA Live 98 is NBA Basketball 98. Just like everything is off in some way, even if they have you know, the right photo there, the title's off. Or if the title's not off, they have the wrong photo or the wrong game launches. It's just really not put together in a um, clean way at all. All right, I think I've seen enough for this collection. I, I wish we could come across like a Sonic or something that is, you know, a really popular game for this collection, but with it not being in alphabetical order, I don't even know where it would be located in here. It's just totally random. So, yeah, I don't want to spend all day looking for this. Indiana Jones, awesome title. At least it says Indiana Jones there. That's pretty on point, at least. And the photo is correct. So that was good. Yeah, all right, I'm going to bounce out of here. Um, over here, we're going to have Super Nintendo. And again, we start with F. Next title is an S title, just really strange. And here we have Mega Man. So it's not changing the title on every single collection, just some. Indiana Jones in here as well. Love that game. Donkey Kong Country is labeled correctly over here. FIFA 98, FIFA Soccer, um, it's just not the way it should be here. Uh, here we've got Hook. That one's labeled correctly, seems to be on point there. Ken Griffey's Major League Baseball, love this game for Super Nintendo, even though they did a crazy job with his lips on here. Uh, but they labeled this one Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Um, okay, so next we have over here, we'll jump into this one. Nothing in there, so I guess that's a quick one to jump into. Sega Game Gear, nothing in there. PS1, all right, we've got PS1. We've got some Tekken games here, Tekken 1, 2, and 3. Those seem to be on point. They look good. Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3 looks good in here for PlayStation. 
How Silent Hill look. Yep, that's Silent Hill there in the photo. And we'll jump into a handful of games just to verify that everything is working properly. Tom and Jerry's uh, House Traps, good. Ridge Racer down here, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be pretty on point here. Mortal Kombat Trilogy is good. Yeah, so this collection's good. Love WWF SmackDown 2, Know Your Role. One of my favorite PlayStation original games. So we'll jump into this collection, test some things out, among other ones. Neo Geo um, Pocket Color, Wonder Swan, what we have in here. Looks to be pretty decent in here. Sonic the Hedgehog uh, Pocket Adventure, that's good. What we have in here, and I don't know the total number of games in, in these collections unless we did the math, and I don't think I should have to do the math and break things down that way. Okay, so pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, this is going to be PC Engine here. So we had Altered Beast there from Street Fighter. And these do seem to be labeled correctly here as far as I can tell. I'm not sure that they all would be, but definitely um, cleaner than the first few collections looked on this setup. All right, so that is our last one. Let's go into history. And again, I'm just hitting um, R1 on the provided PlayStation style controllers. Over here with history, it's going to show you all the titles you've jumped into. Now, um, look at this one. I didn't actually jump into this title, but this says Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and we clearly have an image there that's not Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, down here, I don't know what that is. It's in partially a different language. Um... King of Fighters 96, that seems to line up. Tekken 3 seems to line up. So we'll jump into some titles, but you can see here, there's definitely, is that the same image? No, it's not the same image. We've definitely got some disconnect here. Now, Favorites is a collection you can put together yourself. You can add all your favorite titles right in here for easy access. And now Search over here is a way that we can go in and we can search for things. So let's try to find like, let's see, what's a good one we could look up? Let's look up Mario... Um, we'll just put in Mario and we'll see if we can pull Mario titles this way. I imagine we can. That's a pretty broad search. Uh, so we just type in Mario and a list automatically populates over here on the left-hand side. So we can go over here and navigate it. And we do have a lot of titles pulling together nicely for us. Now we have to just be on the lookout though that we don't, we're not gonna find ones that were mislabeled. And we saw that there are some mislabeled titles on here. So while we do have a pretty extensive list because Mario obviously is probably the most popular game character ever. We have a lot of titles populating in, but I bet you there's some that are not because of the way that things were put together on here. And if we went in here and we typed in, let's do Sonic too. We'll just put in Sonic and leave it broad like that. So we have some that are kind of abbreviated like Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic Advance. We did see Sonic Advance that wasn't written as Sonic Advance 2. Um, so, I mean, it, it works, but we should have an easier time searching things and you know, still is very vague. Like Sonic 1, we don't know what collection that belongs to. We don't know what version it is. We don't even know if it's, you know, Sonic 1 to me would be Sonic the Hedgehog, the original version. Let's let's actually launch it and see what we've got. This doesn't appear to be that. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. And I suppose we could just use this as our segue into the gameplay demo portion. Yeah, so see, Sonic Advance. This is by no means the original. This is, you know, a good 10 years after the original would have been released. But hey, let's uh, jump into some gameplay demos and at least test out the games, make sure that they work properly. And we'll kick it off right here with Sonic Advance. Yeah. 
Alright guys, so I want to dive into this and talk about where things went wrong, why they went wrong, and what you need to be on the lookout for with plug and play setups. Not just this particular one, but plug and play setups in general, because there's a lot of stuff coming out these days that looks identical to previous versions. So I reviewed the original version of this game stick a few months back, and it was overall a good experience. First and foremost, the performance on these isn't exceptional by any means. I think we know that looking at it. This is pure convenience. You plug this into your TV. I can get the same experience out of this on any TV with an HDMI port. Um, it's very easy to take with you on the go. It's lightweight, weighs just a couple ounces, and it plugs into the HDMI port on your TV, and it also gets powered by a USB, um, a USB cable that you plug directly into your TV as well. Typically, your HDMI cables get plugged into ports right next to your USB ports. So very easy to set up on any TV. You can get the same experience at a hotel room's TV. It's just very convenient to take with you on the go. The performance is not going to be in line with the performance of a mini PC or a gaming PC or you know, a modern day console by any means. And I think we all know that just looking at it. Also, the price point indicates that we are going to get a much cheaper product in the end. So we adjust our expectations accordingly. We don't expect the world of this. We're getting it for convenience. I'm cool with that. Um, you know, we aren't going to compare this to those other options out there that are, you know, hundreds of dollars more at the very least. So where this goes wrong is the setup and the lack of attention to detail. They didn't even put things in alphabetical order. That is the biggest issue here. Um, collection by collection, we want to dive in and we want to be able to easily locate our favorite titles and we want to make sure that they're even on here. We can't even verify what's on here because I don't have all day to scan through you know, hundreds of pages to verify what's in there when you have no idea what's coming next on the list. I mean, we have K titles next to A titles, next to Z titles, next to D titles. It's just all over the place. It's an absolute cluster, you know what. Um, so it's just not user friendly in that regard. We also have no idea what the game count is for each collection unless we start breaking things down and looking at the collection that was in there before and the one that's in there after and we start counting backwards and you know, I got a calculator out to figure out what MAME offered in terms of, you know, how many titles were in there. Nobody should have to pull out a calculator and start doing math to figure out what is offered in something you're paying for. So that's just absolutely terrible right there as well. They have also relabeled game titles. So we have game titles that make no sense whatsoever. I can understand if you're trying to cover up the fact that there's some copyright issues out there in play with stuff like this. But you can't have Donkey Kong Country written out in one collection and then change to King Kong in another. That doesn't solve your issue if you're trying to you know, deal with copyright infringement issues or anything like that. That certainly doesn't you know, solve the problem for you in any way, shape, or form. You're still you know, at risk if that's your concern. So beyond that, we have no ability to locate those titles that have been renamed. In this case, there was Donkey Kong Country written out clear as day, and then there was also versions that were written as King Kong. Same title, but if you didn't have that other one, that other version for a different collection that was unrelated, you would search for Donkey Kong Country and never find it. And we saw that with Metroid, for example. Metroid was not listed as Metroid here in this setup at all. Um, now, Metroids, I forget what they actually called Metroid. It was some weird concoction of a name, but we saw that with a lot of different games on here. We also saw games that were listed one way and showed images of a different game and launched as a different game. We saw that with Hook. Luckily, I found Captain Hook, which isn't the title's name, but we did find Captain Hook, which launched the correct game. But the correct game under the game list for Hook was a completely different game from a completely different decade. So 
you can see how this is just an absolute nightmare for the user in the end to locate games, to play the correct games. And then we'll touch on performance here. We obviously adjust our expectations accordingly for this type of product. But PlayStation, for example, the most demanding and most advanced collection on this setup actually was decent, a decent experience. It actually had the soundtrack for games, which is an issue I've seen with other plug and play consoles out there, especially smaller capacity consoles like this. Um, we have the soundtrack for Tekken 3, for example, which is a great way to play that. I hate playing Tekken 3 without the music in the background. It's just not the full experience. There's not a ton of PlayStation games on here, but there is a pretty cool assortment of games. There were some unique titles that I liked, like Blade was a title you don't typically see on consoles like this, um, especially with smaller collection in general for PlayStation, but it was cool to see on there. It's a cool game. It's not a um, massive favorite by any means, but I kind of like obscure titles, so I thought that was cool. Um, the only issue I had with PlayStation was it wasn't really laggy, but the the audio doesn't sync up 100%. There's a delay in the audio. If you see like the kick and the reaction, the audio will be a second or two after that. So it's noticeable. It doesn't totally ruin the experience. No, if you were going to get this for convenience, which is I think is why anybody would get this, um, you know, you could kind of look the other way on it to an extent if you're just trying to enjoy a little brief gaming experience on here. But um, it's, you know, certainly not flawless by any means. Now we went into older collections and I found that like Super Nintendo felt a little bit laggy with Donkey Kong Country. Um, some of the other stuff as well, some of the arcade stuff felt a little bit laggy or like the speeds would kind of increase. Like in Moonwalker, I felt like it, at times it was a little bit slow and then at times it seemed a little bit accelerated. So it just wasn't 100% on point at really at any point in time. It just always felt like it was kind of going up and down and racing back and forth. So again, we kind of look the other way with the performance on here, knowing that this is in the end a cheap and kind of convenient way to get into gaming on the go. But with the fact that it's such a unfriendly experience for the user, I just, I can't, you know, get behind it in any way, shape or form. And we have to be on the lookout for stuff like this because this looks identical to a product that I reviewed not long ago and didn't have these issues with. And I can say the same thing with stuff like um, game grid game grid has two conflicting products out there on the market these days. And I reviewed one. I had a decent experience with it. Uh, I wouldn't say it was phenomenal, but I had a decent experience with it. And now I hear that people are getting consoles that look nothing like what I received and reviewed in that video. And now you start to, you know, play off of what was released in the past and people start coming out with new versions of game consoles and they're playing off of previous versions and they're saying that you know there's updates being made to it so people assume oh if it's updated then the, it's the latest and greatest and we should go out and get that version and here we're seeing 100 percent that's not the case so be on the lookout with these plug and play console setups out there uh same could be said with game drives you don't fully know who's behind them who's creating them and when stuff like this comes out of china it's oftentimes very easy for people to get, you know, inferior versions that look identical and then oftentimes have, you know, a cheaper cost associated with them. And they're able to kind of market on the backs of what's been previously released. So just keep an eye out. Be real careful when you're buying stuff like this, especially off of Amazon or AliExpress. There's just a lot of stuff going on kind of behind the scenes that I think isn't on the up and up always 100 percent. So just take out of this what you can. Um, you know, it's not always uh, a good experience in the end. But let me know what you guys thought of what this has to offer, what the experience was like on this product, and what you might be on the lookout for in the future with plug and play setups. That's going to do it for today, though. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content today. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.